The first major battle of the Civil War began here July 21st, 1861. A struggle between Union, northern U.S. states, and the Confederacy, southern U.S. states, on how to divide powers between the federal government and the states. When Abraham Lincoln was elected 16th President of the United States and took actions that the southern states found detrimental both economically and socially, they seceded from the Union. Slavery was the core issue surrounding the Civil War. Technically, the war started when Confederate troops fired on Fort Sumter, April 12, 1861, an island fort in Charleston Harbor, South Carolina. Lincoln, in an effort to preserve the Union, called for 75,000 volunteer troops to join the Army. Under pressure to end the war quickly, he sent a very cautious General McDowell to advance his very green and untrained troops and capture the Confederate capital of Richmond, Virginia, some 80 miles south of Washington, D.C., the federal capital. However, McDowell's troops were stopped here at Manassas, Virginia by General P.G.T. Beauregard in a bloody, hard-fought battle. The Union forces retreating haphazardly back to Washington, a stunning defeat of the Union and a decisive Confederate victory. Both sides now knew that the war would not have a quick outcome. Here in the Manassas National Battlefield Park Museum, we see Civil War era relics. Some of the major issues of this battle were poor communications and slow troop movements, compounded by the fact that you had a hard time recognizing your enemy. There were no uniforms specific to each side. Battle flags were similar and difficult to distinguish. The time of the blue versus the gray was yet to come. My effort here is not to give a blow-by-blow -blow description of the battle. I'll leave that to the experts and leave links in the description below, but to show some highlights of what happened on this scenic, peaceful farmland. This is Spring Hill Farm, known now as Henry Hill, named for the Henry family and home of 84-year-old bedridden Judith Henry. When the Confederates were pushed back from Matthews Hill, they took up position here. Sharpshooters manned the house. The Union, noticing this, opened fire with cannons and riddled the house, mortally wounding Mrs. Henry, who died later that evening. The first of an estimated 50,000 civilians killed during the four years of war. We see here in the museum some of the artillery used during the Civil War. and Judith Henry's final resting place.
As the Union Army advanced to Henry Hill, the Confederate troops regrouped under General Bernard E. B., who was shot here and died later that day. During intense fire, little-known Brigadier General Thomas J. Jackson held his ground, causing B. to exclaim, There is Jackson, standing like a stone wall. Jackson's, whose men admired his stubbornness and courage, started calling him Stonewall Jackson. Some of the heaviest, most sustained fighting occurred on this ground, resulting in over 5,000 American casualties. With fresh reinforcements coming by train, the Confederates launched a counterattack against the tired Union troops, causing them to retreat. Many panicked, dropping their weapons and running towards Washington, D.C. Honoring the dead, this monument of Bull Run states, in memory of the patriots who fell at Bull Run, July 21st, 1861. This was one of the first monuments dedicated to the Civil War soldiers. Built by Union soldiers, it took nearly three weeks to complete. A final task before their discharge. It was formally dedicated on June 13th, 1865. A little over a year later, a second battle of Manassas took place here. Again, a Confederate victory. Winston Churchill once said, those that fail to learn from history are doomed to repeat it. The grounds are quiet now peaceful.